our meeting to order. Please stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. It's over here. Yeah. Right oh, here. hello. <laughs> <laughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please remain standing for a moment of silence. Let's take a moment to remember the one firefighter and three police officers that have passed since our last board meeting. Thank you. Please be seated. All right. Is this, is this one working? Working okay? I'll speak up. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here. We have a special meeting, kind of a two-part meeting this evening, where the first half will be uh, dedicated to uh, the awards ceremony of all of our staff and firefighters. And the second half, uh, there will be a short intermission, and then we'll have the second half of our meeting, which will be just that, the business side of what we do. So with that said, uh, Chief, um, do you want to go ahead and start? Certainly. Thank you, Board uh, Chairman Soto. Uh, we're honored today to be presenting the 2018 Employee Recognition Awards. Uh, the Sonoma Fire District team has an amazing group of, of uh, employees working to serve our community. Annually, annually we recognize them as, uh, some outstanding, as well as some outstanding people in our community. This is a peer nomination process that we, we partake in. And while we typically end up with uh, uh, only one person that gets recognized in the end that you'll see today, uh, know that there's many others that are equally worthy that have been nominated by their peers uh, behind the scenes. Typically, we do this at an awards banquet or, or something uh, of the sort. And this should. Did you do that, Gabe? <laughs> he said someone's going to get hurt here, and apparently. I don't know if they're locked. If they're locked. It's all good. It's all good. I've, I've, I barely died. So I should be awarded some Meritory Service Award for that. I've given my life for these awards. Ooh, almost damaged my soda. Someone's got to open that for me. <laughs> it is carbonated. Um, so, so typically these awards are recognized at, that's not going to help. I'll just keep my hands down here. Typically these are awarded at an employee banquet. Uh, this year we decided that an awards banquet would uh, not happen and uh, at a later date we might uh, do some sort of uh, uh, event for our, our employees, but uh, at this point we wanted to make this recognition as it's timely and, and recognize our folks. So some of the items uh, that you'll see given out tonight will be the firefighter of the year, the officer of the year, the operational support employee of the year, the customer service award, an outstanding citizen or organization, as well as some unit citations. And unit citations are given as in some uh, incredibly difficult calls that uh, throughout the year we may have responded to, made a, a significant impact, decisions that were made, really made the outcome of, a, a, of an incident that much uh, uh, improved. And so we'll have, I think, uh, two of those uh, unit citations today. And wow, we have all those fancy looking guys uh, in the back of the room there excited. So with that, I will be excited to turn over this uh, process to uh, uh, Battalion Chief Baker, who's going to start with the, the two unit citations. Uh, so, so unit citation uh, award is, uh, is given, like I said, to a group that's demonstrated the outstanding performance for their duties at SFD. It could be for a single act or for an outstanding performance or general overall performance throughout the year. And so uh, with that, I'd ask that Mr. Chairman come over to the, to the uh, flagpole or the, the flag over here, and you'll be uh, helping present these awards. I will turn this over to Battalion Chief Baker for uh, a few nice things to say about these two incidents. All right, thank you, Chief Gage. And first of all, I'd like to apologize. I'm getting over a head cold, so it's difficult to understand me. I apologize. <clears throat> As Chief Kazian mentioned, uh, these two calls that we're going to discuss today were two separate uh, teams that were involved with multiple stations involved. They were very difficult calls that required a lot of personnel, a lot of specialties, um, and you know they all had significantly better outcomes because of these individuals here today. The first one I'd like to talk about uh, is the secret Slick Rock incident. It's off of Chavez Ranch Road down off the new subdivision down towards Oak Creek. We were initially dispatched to the call, came into Station 6's area. The coordinates were a little bit off with dispatch. Uh, we finally were able to locate where the patient was uh, actually at. <coughs> Excuse me. Dispatch station one, 
troop got down there, made quick access to the patient. I was able to tie in with Captain Kurtz, who was the lead company officer there. They started hiking down, I think it was about a mile, mile and a half, wasn't it, Captain Kurtz? Down to the patient, extremely difficult trail. Um, we got a report that a male patient had fallen 30 feet, uh, had significant injuries, was in and out of consciousness. So the <coughs> crew expedited getting down there, and we got air resources, which our closest air resource was DPS Ranger out of Kingman with a 90 minute ETA, <coughs> which was extremely delayed. Flagstaff and Phoenix, neither one were available. So Captain Kurtz made the decision, you know, where they were gonna package the patient up, start moving him back. Some extremely difficult terrain. I don't, there was, I don't know how long it took you guys to get him packaged, but it was relatively quick. All the while they were <coughs> assisting with all medical interventions, which again, were pretty significant uh, interventions that were needed for the injuries. Crew started working their way back in constant communication with Captain Kurtz. We decided to keep the aircraft coming. Uh, I had firefighter Brent Johnson from Station 3 bring in the rescue. He's a short haul technician. Uh, he was there on scene starting to hike down <coughs> to assist the crews. Um, as they were working our way out, we were constantly communicating and assessing our, our risk management. Whether or not, you know, do we continue bringing the, the patient out on the trailhead? or do we continue bringing the aircraft to possibly do a short haul operation? <coughs> we decided that was the best route at the time, continuing to communicate with each other. Ultimately, DPS Ranger did make it on scene. Uh, at that point, talking to Captain Kurtz and again, evaluating that, that risk management process, we decided at that point it wasn't worth risking the crew getting hurt, continuing up that, that terrain that they were, and we would configure DPS Ranger for a short haul operation. Guardian Air also brought a, a medical helicopter. We found an, a landing zone for both helicopters, landed them on scene, configured DPS Ranger. Uh, Firefighter Johnson had already taken his equipment down. <coughs> Firefighter Sean Foster was assisting with patient care. I believe he was the lead paramedic on this call. And we made the decision to short haul. <coughs> DPS Ranger configured, picked up Firefighter Johnson, conducted a short haul operation with the assistance of all the crew members there on the scene and uh, got the patient up to the LZ, transferred over to Guardian Air, and <coughs> was safely transported to, I believe, Flagstaff Medical Center with multi-system trauma. Again, it was a 30-foot fall with significant in injuries, a lot of uh, very specific interventions, medical interventions were needed to assist with patient care, and the, the guys did a fantastic job. Um, you know, having been a recipient of these awards in the past, I, I really don't believe there's a much greater honor in the fire service than being nominated by your peers. You guys work with you every day. There's countless calls throughout the year that you know, have been nominated or could have been nominated for the same award. But these individuals were chosen by their peers and to me that's very humbling and it's an honor for these individuals. So <coughs> that will be the first unit citation that we give is to Captain Kurtz and the rest of the crew that was involved. <coughs> Just to Jordan, Jordan Baker, Jesse Cave, Keith Christofferson, Adam Derringer, Sean Foster, Brent Johnson, Jonathan King, and Ralph Kurtz. Don't worry about it. I don't know what's going on. We'll figure it out. I'll just try not to kill somebody. Myself. All right. For the second incident we had, that one occurred March 31st, uh, 2018. If I failed to mention that, I'm sorry. The second call <coughs> occurred on October 15th, 2018. Uh, we had had some significant moisture move through the area, wet the ground. Uh, pretty good, it was saturated. We had a hiker that was hiking on the West Fork Trailhead. Uh, we got a report of a 
an injured hiker that had been struck by a tree. Um, having been on two or three of these calls in the past, we know how significant these injuries can be, you know, depending on the size of the tree and the <coughs> area where the patient was struck. Engine 551 crew with Captain Benetone and Engineer Espial were the first in engine company there. Made an incredible response time as far up for the canyon as West Fork is from Station 5 and blitzed in with their initial crew too. They were followed by Engine 541, I believe it was Captain Everline, uh, Firefighter Mark Howard, and Firefighter Keating. Uh, they were the second in engine company and then I followed <coughs> shortly there behind them. And then uh, Ambulance 511 was dispatched from Station 1. Station 4 was already on a call. That had uh, Firefighter Jeremy Vargas and Probationary Firefighter Graywall from Station 1 that would come up on the ambulance crew. Crew made access to the patient. Uh, patient, I believe, was still pinned underneath the tree. Uh, crew had to make a split-second decision how to get the patient out, either remove the patient from the hazard or remove the hazard from the patient. They were able to slide her out from underneath the tree Again, in and out of consciousness, uh, significant injuries. And uh, I think from the time they made patient contact until engine 541, which was the second in engine, and ambulance 511 <coughs> accessed the crew as well, from patient contact back out to the helicopter, which we had since launched, was 20 minutes. So for a mile, mile and a half back in on the trailhead, that's, that's really moving quick. Really um, I was very impressed when the crew told me they had patient package and already were heading out. It, really sped things up for me because it's usually not that fast, but they were moving really quick. Uh, Firefighter Howard, who is a rotary wing helicopter pilot that works for us here at Station 4, stayed out with me to establish a, a landing zone at West Fork. Our pre-identified landing zone uh, was obstructed with slash piles that we were unaware had been placed there. So he went out, scouted out an area for me that he thought would be appropriate to land the helicopter. Uh, he got in communication with the helicopter pilot and got them lined out on where they needed to land safely and effectively, got them positioned good, landed. Crews tr then transferred over the, the patient to the, the flight crew, again, making some um, you know, significant interventions, medical interventions for a, a positive patient outcome. And again, I, I can't say how impressed I was by how fast the crew got in there, made these, these uh, assessments and intervened with these medical conditions and, and got the patient back out to the helicopter to ultimately end up in the, <coughs> the facility where they needed to be. So uh, again, very impressed. So I'd like to have <laughs> Captain Benetone, Engineer Espial, Captain Everline, Probationary Firefighter Graywall, Probationary Firefighter Keenan, come on up. <laughs> so Firefighter Jeremy Vargas is actually on a call right now and, and Firefighter Mark Howard, who I think is the one that got me sick, is actually <laughs> out sick. Yeah. So we'll make sure we get them their, their certificates. Congratulations. Congratulations, Cap. Hey, congrats. Good to see you. Yes, sir. Congratulations. Congrats. 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 Yeah. Board and audience, you might remember, there's two of our newest hires right there that have you know, been on a significant call of getting a unit citation already with just a few months on the, on the job. Nice. So we, we put them right in the fray. All good, so, Jordan? Yeah, I, I appreciate you allowing me this opportunity to recognize these individuals' performance. Like I said, there's not a number of calls every year that could be nominated for these, but these two really stood out, so thank you. And Jordan Baker was the incident commander on both of those calls who didn't get in the picture, I noted, by the way. <laughs> nice work. I'm glad. If you're sick, stay away. That's all good. I want to blame you for us all being sick. <laughs> I'd like to bring up Chief uh, uh, Jason Coyle to, uh, to talk about the Operational Support Award and the Community Service Award. All right. Thank you, Chief. So this is one of the few times I actually can be louder than, than Jordan. But um, <laughs> So the first award we're going to give out, or the first award I'm going to give out, is for, for Mike Sheehan. And I'm sure that Mike would probably be anywhere else except in the middle of this boardroom with us right now. But I appreciate you being here, buddy. So um, Mike is our fire mechanic who does an excellent job. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, sometimes I think people do, when they're always doing a good job, you kind of like, it kind of takes a little reminder from other folks that, about those bumps. You know, and there's some, certainly some bumps this year where, and one of them that was given as an example was 
one of the, the engines, the ambulance starter went out, and at the time we were, we were down in an ambulance, and you know, it would have been really easy for Mike just to say, hey, you know what, I got the starter on order. I'll do that, when the starter comes in, I'll put it in. Uh, he didn't do that, instead he chose to stop everything he's doing, take and, and drive down to Phoenix, get a starter for that vehicle, get it back up, and had, it, had that uh, ambulance put back in service, so we're able to provide the care that we need to by the end of that operational period. And that's just one of many examples um, of, of the hard work and the, and the support. There's a, literally a list of different examples that individuals gave about how the good work that Mike did. And, you know, one of the things, I like reading uh, Sun Tzu because most of the time I make it mean whatever I want. But this one I think stuck out. So you said the line between order and disorder lies in logistics. And I honestly feel like that's, um, that, that couldn't be any more true for what we do. Uh, there's, there's a lot of, of operational personnel like myself, and if we go home, one of us is sick, there's usually somebody that we can get to fill in that gap to plug the hole in the short term. But when it comes to our logistical needs, uh, you know, Mike's it right now. Mike is our fire mechanic, and he just continues to impress me day in and day out by his work ethic and his ability to accomplish what needs to be accomplished and just do it with just a, a humble professionalism. And for that, I want to award Mike the Operational Support Employee of the Year. Not sure if Mike has any skills in fixing tables, but I'd take a table fix right about now, Mike. It's broken. I was afraid to touch it. I'm nervous. I think Gabe is afraid to touch his. That's I remember. It's true, huh? All right, so the, uh, the next award that I have an opportunity to present is for the Community Service of the Year Award. Uh, this award is being presented to Division Chief Ed Mazoulis. Mm -hmm. So I got to I kind of got to back up a little bit when I start talking about Ed, um, <laughs> <laughs> because the, the the first time it was actually before I even met Ed, but a buddy of mine is the was at the time the captain of the of the Mormon Lake Hotshots, and so Ed was on a, a fire in I think you were in Montana, weren't you guys? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and <laughs> and he was allowed to leave the crew to come down and. and finished the last part of his testing process because he's trying to get a job with us. And my buddy Jake, he just said, he goes, well, he's a good dude. He goes, but he can't dodge stumps worth a dang. <laughs> and so there's, I'll let Ed fill you in on the stump part, but I was like, he's a good dude. And, you know, he said he'd be a good hire. I was like, what does that really mean? And, and you know, as we're looking at some of the reasons why Ed was nominated by his peers for this award, I talked about how he's been a counselor for the Arizona Burn Foundation Burn Camp, Camp Courage, mm. since 2000. Uh, Ed participates in diabetes camp and his job is, I, I was teasing about, I told you he's a camp, just like hang out and make sure his kids don't get sugar in the diabetes camp. <laughs> and you know, he responds, <laughs> I knew that was a little slow, but he, he monitors the sugar for the children, their insulin, right, with their blood glucose levels. He, he monitors and administers their insulin, and he makes sure that their pumps are working. And, you know, for a bunch of kids that had an opportunity to go out to the camp that you know, have a disability that um, could prevent them from doing that, having somebody there with his medical skills that's, that's willing to volunteer their time to do that, I think is significant. Um, he also serves as a Cub Scout pack Cub Master. I almost called it a troop, which is a faux pas, I guess, in Boy Scout speak. And, you know, to give an example of some of the stuff that Ed does is he just, it was recently, his kids had an opportunity at school to participate uh, in a mountain biking venture on, and through a um, cooperative with the Verde Valley Cycling Coalition, everyone in the elementary school that his children go to ever do that. So Ed volunteered to be the bicycling coach. So you know, once again, there's just a need that in the community that, ha that needed to be filled, and Ed stepped up to do that. He's constantly dem demonstrated a willingness to commit an effort to make a difference in other people's lives. And I, and I think that's why my buddy Jake said that he'd be a good hire. And he was right. Mm. Good job, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> Great work. 
Thank you, Chief Coyle, for those two awards. We'll see you back in a minute, so don't go too far. I'd like to call up Heidi Robinson at this time to uh, present the Customer Service Award and the Outstanding Citizen Award. Thank you, Chief. So I have the honor of presenting the award for the Customer Service of the Year uh, 2018 award to Amy Hedman. Amy is uh, the primary, one of the primary contacts in our uh, ambulance billing department for patients and insurance representatives. So clearly, she exhibits excellent customer service every day as part of her job. It's kind of expected. Um, but anyone who works in customer service knows that that's not always as easy as it sounds. Uh, what is exceptional, however, is Amy's absolute dedication to the welfare of the patient. She is truly an advocate and uses all of her resources to solve problems and to serve the customer to the best of her ability. She carries this advocacy over into the internal customer, her colleagues. She is being recognized predominantly because of her open door policy. She opens her door and her heart to listen to the needs of her coworkers. Her crying is gonna make me cry, this is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And she uses her keen observational skills to notice and acknowledge the unspoken needs and challenges of her coworkers. She offers a safe place for others to be accepted as themselves, to work through issues, and to leave feeling better. For this, Amy, we all thank you. Now that that one's over. <laughs> All right, so now we get the Outstanding Citizen Organization of the Year. Uh, this is a, an award that recognizes somebody in the community that exhibits outstanding achievement um, in community service and citizenship. And this year we're presenting that, uh, I'm going to mess up the name, so I'm just going to not go there and say the Sedona Safeway for manager, Chris, and do we have a representative from Safeway here today? And you're Josh, is that right? Welcome, Josh. So we've all visited our local, local grocery stores and you've seen fundraisers and Girl Scouts outside, the, the bell at Christmas time, and um, you don't really think of what it takes to service that. Um, and there's a service behind it. You have to develop relationships with those organizations to make sure that it's not a burden on the customers coming to your, to your store um, and that there's a benefit to everyone. That, that comes along with that. And with that, it takes a skill to build and manage those relationships. And that's been our experience, and particularly Tyler Wu, um, who or coordinates a lot of these events there, will tell you that that relationship built um, was an easy and wonderful experience. Uh, we, we benefit from it. We, um, we enjoy the experience there. There's always energy and enthusiasm and gratitude from the entire staff, um, also the customers, of Safeway uh, and just all around it's been a successful campaign for us. We do our Muscular Dystrophy Association Fill the Boot campaign there and then most recently Toys for Tots. We've had excellent record breaking years this year and it wouldn't have been possible without the cooperation and the support um, from Safeway and Chris and the entire team. Um, we would like to state that this is just a prime example of how the relationships that you build in the community truly do make a positive difference and for that we thank Safeway and everyone there as our, um, our organization of the year. Truly is a great partnership with, with uh, what Tyler does and Safeway and, and many other places that help make a difference. So thank you, Safeway, once again. Chief Coyle's back up. We've got two more presentations, so we're getting there, folks. Uh, 
Chief Coyle, firefighter and officer at your place. Yeah, thank you. Um, so this year, uh, the recipient for the firefighter year is firefighter Sean Foster. He was nominated by his peers and after looking at uh, all the different things that he had done to contribute to the organization's success this last year, it was, um, it was pretty apparent that, that he was deserving of that award. So, you know, what a, well, again, uh, you know, we talked about logistics before. This is a great, an another example of that. It's that, you know, things like the uniform store, how everybody looks the same, how everybody gets the right equipment, thankless job. Thankless job that requires a lot of work. And it's a pretty easy job for somebody to just step away from, ah, I don't want to take that on. Sean didn't do that. He decided he wanted to take it on and make it better, and he did. Not only did he make it better, but he also found a vendor that would provide us with, con with a consistent quality product all the time, which wasn't that easy to do. Um, he streamlined the processes about dis distribution, about the administrative process, and, and resolved a bunch of issues to get the uniforms and everything out to people. Even when he was in the Florida Keys, he did these things. So that's pretty impressive. <coughs> he also identified that our, our jackets that we had, that we wear out on emergency incidents, that they, while they had the minimum amount of reflective material that was required from them, that's all they had. And he went out and he identified jackets that are, nobody has this on right now because it's not cold in here, but if you can imagine just the brightest, ugliest, <laughs> super green, green possible, it says fire and is ultimately reflective. <laughs> that's what they are. And so, you know, he, he found those jackets and then he found a way to pay for them and secured a grant to get everybody, so all the operational personnel, we got jackets that can help them function effectively out in the environment and at the same time keep them safe. And you know, one of the things I thought about when I was reading through the uh, different things that were written about Sean is that so when you manage performance in an organization, it's the minimum set requirements. That's only how you do it. This is what you got to do to get by. Um, Sean's position of firefighter paramedic, those minimum requirements are high. A lot of stuff they have to do, training otherwise. So when he takes that discretionary time and demonstrates uh, that he not only wants to identify a problem, but he's just He's, he's going to figure out a way to fix it, and he does. You know, that, that right there to me is taking ownership and, it, and is demonstrating a uh, skill set that is certainly above those minimum requirements, far and away above the minimum requirements for a firefighter. <coughs> and for that, Sean, thank you. I believe that grant was for $28,000. award that I have the honor to be able to present is for the Officer of the Year, and Captain Pat Ojeda in the back there is the recipient this year of the Officer of the Year. Uh, Yay! So, while Captain Ojeda has shown uh, dedication to all aspects of his job, his experience in IT roles, he's advised on most different events, there's some certain things he's done, I think, that really set him apart from his peers when it came to the, the, um, the applications that were submitted. And you know, one of the, his role in some of the strategic planning processes that we engage in. Other one was uh, his, his willingness to step up and work in some strategic roles to help evaluate different issues. And then the other one's grant writing. Um, we want to look for alternative sources of funding to affect some of the purchases that we need to be able to increase our operational readiness. And, you know, in my mind when I was reading through these things, it, it struck me most was that one of the key attributes of effective leaders demonstrated the ability to analyze the mission, assess alternatives, and craft a strategy to achieve the mission. Captain Hayes continues to demonstrate initiative and the ability to assess and leverage alternatives to improve our readiness. Uh, this has not only allowed us to fund essential products, but has also improved our interagency coordination. You know, fortunately, catastrophic events are rare. However, the significance of the consequence of these events makes the type of planning that he's been engaged in essential. So, thank you, Captain. Yeah. <laughs> 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 
look at the better picture. <laughs> So, so board, members of the public, I think it's just important to realize that while we recognized uh, the people we recognize today, as, I, as we've stated, there's many others behind the scenes that are equally uh, capable of, of achieving the same awards and delivering the excellent service that uh, we talked about today. One of the options we have is, is the chief, uh, the fire chief award of excellence that is not mandatory to be awarded every year, but when when it seems right, uh, we do, and I think I've probably given three of these away, four maybe in the last seven years I've been here. And right away, <clears throat> uh, I noticed something about somebody that I wanted to recognize, and this was going back months ago, and now I've got maybe a second prong, so I'll, I'll add some stuff to this, but um, physical fitness is a very important part of our job as firefighters. It's something that we all embrace in different ways throughout our lives. The recipient of the 2018 Fire Chief Award of Excellence has taken his personal fitness to a new level and has impressed me so much in his transition. It was actually actually one year ago today that he was injured and decided that making health and fitness a priority in his life, he was going to change. And here we are a year later. Um, he shows up to work many times, uh, having hiked various mountains at 4 o'clock in the morning. I don't understand. <laughs> <coughs> he recently thought, you know the end of the year why don't I just start at the uh, Grand Canyon at the top and I'll go down to Phantom Ranch and I'll work my way back up and I, I've been there a few times and the sign clearly says <laughs> we do not recommend you go down and back up in the same day I mean it does say that so <laughs> violating all national standards and warning signs on <laughs> trails uh, he started at the South Kaibab Trail, went down to Phantom Ranch, and then came back up and ended up at Bright Angel Lodge. And it sounded like about 18 miles or something. I don't know if it's something like that. And a couple of 5,000-foot elevation changes of time or two. Pretty impressive. Now, <clears throat> he happens to have his, uh, his wife, Christy, who's an avid runner. So he decided that he would commit to a half marathon, say, in April this year in Prague. So he's got this uh, half marathon. Although you've run a marathon before, a half marathon? No, sir, I ran a half marathon. Okay, so I knew you'd done a marathon. I can't remember which one. So he's done a half, and you're doing a half there. So we've done some research on this. I was trying to help him a little bit. Um, he's not worried about dehydration at that race because there are plenty of watering holes along the course that if he decides to stop and rest, he will not dehydrate. So I'm, I'm, I'm feeling good about that. He'll make good decisions. But here we are a year later and, uh, and 90 pounds less. Uh, we see Assistant Chief Jason Coyle, uh, a whole new person. Well, the recognition definitely stems from this transformation over the last year in the, in the fitness side. Um, I, I wouldn't be, I'd be remiss to not talk about your 20 years of, of dedicated service to the district. Uh, most recently, uh, your willingness to step up and, and go to the Assistant Chief role. And as you know, you'll be taking over my spot uh, here in a couple of hours. <laughs> It's like 48 or something like that. It's pretty close. If you're counting, I'm not sure who is. Some of you might be. I'm just trying to help you out. Don't want Gabe to start running numbers. Uh, Jason's also proudly served our, our country, uh, and he's also uh, uh, an accomplished photographer. So I'm honored to present my last ever Fire Chief Award uh, to, to Assistant Chief Jason Coyle. You've impressed me. You've done great things, and you certainly have earned this award of excellence. So thank you for your hard work dedication to your fitness and you're really you know, I'm proud of you so come on over Thank you all for, for coming and participating in this. I believe uh, Chairman Soto's got a few words to say. 
and uh, I couldn't be more proud of everyone here and everyone who's not here. So thank you. Thank you, Chief. <clears throat> thank you. Uh, and a great big thank you to everybody here. Everyone who received an award deserved it. Uh, I, I look at our chief uh, staff, all of our officers, they're second to none. Our administrative staff, really I look at as unsung heroes because you guys are the ones, you guys are the ones that make this district run and we recognize that every day. So thank you to all the administrative staff. I look at our firefighters as our, as our rock stars because they are what the community sees. And I, I just want to say one thing to address that is that is that your greatest act of bravery was the day you became a firefighter. Everything else from that point is all in the line of duty. Even though this, these awards were based on our peers, the community of Sedona can never repay you for the job you do that you just consider a day in the life of a firefighter. Our children look at you as, although you're bigger than life, to many of us, you're our heroes, and to others, you're their mentors. And so, in representing this board, I simply want to say, and humbly want to say, thank you for a job well done. Thank you. <laughs> With that, we'll break for about a five minute recess allow you folks to take a few pictures and enjoy the rest of your evening and we'll restart with the business of, at hand. Thank you. I'll make myself available for pictures if you'd like to come here. <laughs> <laughs> it works, bud. Thank you. Thank you.